विद्या प्रकाशन मंदिर प्राइवेट लिमिटेड हेलो स्टूडेंट्स लेट अस लर्न जनरल साइंस फॉर क्लास सिक्स फ्रॉम द बुक साइंस स्क्वायर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न चैप्टर टेन स्ट्रक्चर एंड फंक्शंस ऑफ लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स in this chapter we shall discuss about the different structure and functions of plants and also in human body with the help of movement in animals let us go into the chapter we know that all living organisms are made up of cells all these cells are organized into different organs to carry out complex activities plants are the basic source of food for most of the living beings when you observe any plant you see at least three parts yes the leaf you can see the stem and you can see the root human humans also have body parts such as hands legs eyes etc each of which has a specific function to carry out similarly plants also have parts with definite structure and a specific function to perform let us discuss about it in detail systems in plants systems of plants is classified into root system and shoot system let us discuss about root system root we know that it grows below the ground and it is towards the moisture and gravity but away from light the roots are produced directly from the radical known as primary roots the roots primary roots bear many lateral roots known as secondary roots the secondary roots further bear lateral roots known as tertiary roots so roots are classified as primary root secondary roots and tertiary roots let us now learn about different kinds of root system there are two kinds of root systems namely tap root system it consists of one major root from which various minor branches arises it is seen in balsam and pea plants fibrous root system it consists of numerous fine roots growing from the base of the plant stem it is seen in wheat and millet plants you can see the difference between the tap root system and the fibrous root system the tap root system have main primary root secondary root tertiary roots whereas fibrous system do not have any such type of roots it is grown as a bunch let us learn about modification of root in some plants the roots become fleshy due to the absorption of food materials aerial roots that is the roots found above the ground or modified into epiphytic roots in vanda epiphytic roots in vanda means it is seen grown on the other plants crop roots you can see in the banyan tree the roots are found above the ground still roots we can see in the zemes climbing roots in beetle respiratory roots in avicennia sucking roots in cascuta so roots are modified 
in various ways especially aerial roots are modified as epiphytic roots crop roots stilt roots climbing roots respiratory roots and sucking roots let us now learn about shoot system it grows towards the sunlight and are above the ground shoot system will be having stem leaves flowers branches and fruits stem we know it is an elongated organ which bears leaves flowers and fruits the part from which the leaves arise is known as node the part between two nodes is known as internode all stems will have nodes and internodes let us see the modification of stem some of the underground stems are modified for food storage rhizomes are non green brown in color with distinct nodes and internodes these are fleshy due to storage of food materials example ginger you can see ginger which is non green you can see it is a brown in color you can see lot of scales on it we we'll call that as a scale leaves which we will peel during cooking bulbs or dry membranous with fleshy scale leaves the base of the bulb has adventitious roots example garlic and onion you can see onion you can see layers that is uh, these are called fleshy scale leaf which are found uh, formed from the base of the disc next is in form that is you can see in colacasia the stems are reduced condensed with a flattened base having nodes and internodes with the base having adventitious roots tuber is nothing but a potato is a fleshy part of the plant which stores food it is covered with number of depressions known as i each i represents a node tuber is seen in the as in seen in the example of potato leaf leaves are thin flat organs responsible for photosynthesis in plants it originates from shoot apical meristems and develops laterally at the node the main parts of a leaf includes leaf base petiole and lamina lamina is also called as leaf blade leaf base is the part where leaf attaches to the stem it has two small leaf like structure called stipules stipule is a long thin stalk that links the leaf blade to the stem lamina is a green flat surface consisting of a small branched veins and veinlets you can see small in the diagram you can see small veins passing through throughout the leaf midrib this can be seen in the middle of the lamella which divides the surface leaf surface into two
types of leaves. Based on the structure and arrangement, leaves are classified into two types. Simple leaves, which is having single blade. Compound leaves, which has many leaflets. Let us now learn about modification of leaves. The xerophytic leaves, that is, which we can see in the deserts, are modified as phylloclade for storage of food. Tendrils in sweet pea are modified to form climbers. Leaves in Pansia are modified into spines to reduce transpiration. In Bignonia, leaves are modified into hooks for climbing purpose. In Acacia, the winged petiole, known as phyllode, which acts like a leaf, performs the functions of leaflets. In insectivore plants, the leaves are modified into various forms to trap and digest the insects. Flowers. Flowers are the reproductive part of a plant. It contains four main parts, namely sepals, petals, stamens and carpels. Petals are also known as corolla, is bright colored part of the flower. Sepals or calyx form the outermost wall of the flower. These both are small leaf-like parts growing at the base of the petals. Stamens are the male parts of the flower which has stamens consisting of anthers and filament. It is the male part. Crystals or carpels is a female part of the flower which has ovary. The ovary has Style stigma. Let us now learn about the functions of the flowers. The functions of the sepals is to protect the flower in the bud stage. That is, it protects the bud of the flower. The functions of the petals is to attract pollinators such as insects, butterflies, etc. to the flower. Anthers and styles are responsible to bring about fertilization. Stigma contains a sticky substance which helps to catch pollen grains from pollinators. After fertilization, the ovule becomes seeds of the fruit. Let us now learn about the structure of the human body. We know that in unicellular organisms, only one cell, that is single cell, perform all the complex activities. And so, there is no level of organization. But in multicellular organisms, the cells of similar structure will combine to form a tissue to perform functions. The cells together form a tissues. Different tissues are united to form an organ. Different organ together forms organ system. These organ system perform individual activities. In the diagram you can see only one cell is taken for the multicellular Similar cell structure forms tissue. All these tissue, different tissue combine to form an organ like stomach, small intestine, large intestine like that. And it forms an organ system like digestive system, respiratory system, circulatory system, excretory system, etc. Each organ system will perform different activities. For example, circulatory system 
will help in the functioning of heart. Digestive system helps in digestion of food. Excretion system helps in the excretion of the waste products in the body. Let us now learn what are the different systems in the human body. There are different organ systems in our body such as skeletal system, digestive system, respiratory system, circulatory system, reproductive system, excretory system, nervous system. Let us learn about skeletal system. Bones in our body forms the framework supporting the whole body is known as skeleton. It forms a framework of the body. Our skeleton is made up of 206 bones and cartilages. The bones are hard and rigid but the cartilages are soft and elastic. There are about 650 muscles attached to the various bones in our body. Let us now learn the main functions of the skeletal system. The main function of the skeletal system is to give support to the body so that it can protect the inner organs. It gives the body its shape along with the muscles. It produces blood cells such as red blood cells or RBC and white blood cells or WBC. It allows the movement of the body. Let us learn about the different parts of the skeletal system. The parts of the skeletal system consist of axial skeletal system, appendicular skeleton system. Axial is nothing but at the top part that is skull, vertebral column and rib cage. Skull is on the head, rib cage on the chest and vertebral column is at the back. The appendicular skeleton system includes shoulder part that is shoulder girdle, hip girdle that is pelvic girdle and the lungs. Skeletal joints. There are two types of joints, namely movable joints and immovable joints. When the bones cannot move at the joints, we call it as a fixed joints. It can be seen in the skull and the joints between the upper jaw and the rest of the skull. In these, it is fixed. The joints are fixed but cannot move. When there is a movement between bones and has cartilages between them, then the joint will call it as a movable joints. Let us now learn about different types of movable joints. First joint is a hinge joint. It allows the movement in forward, backward, right and then left directions. So, you can think where our body, which part of our body moves in forward, backward, left and right. Yes, it's an elbow joint, ankle joint, knee joint and the joints between the phalanges and the fingers. Next is the pivotal joints. Here you can see the movement for rotation, twisting extension and flexibility. It's a more or less a cylindrical bone moving in a ring. So, rotation, twisting, extension and flexibility, which part of the body is capable of doing these movements? Yes, it is neck joining with the head. You can turn, rotate, extend and flexible. The third type of joint is a ball and socket joint. Here the joint is a ball shaped surface in which one bone fits into the hollow space of the another bone. We call this as a socket. 
this joint helps to move in all directions that is in circular motion example shoulder joint and hip joint the fourth movable joint is a gliding joint it allows bones to slide a little this you can see in wrist that is in hand and feet in the foot gliding joint can be seen in the wrist of the hand at the foot let us now discuss the movements in various animals there are various animals which possesses different kind of movements like swimming running jumping flying gliding crawling etc the movement is necessary for them to search food and for reproduction let us discuss few movements in these animals earthworms you can see the earthworm will not have any internal skeleton the body is made up of many rings joined end to end the muscles attached to these ring helps to extend and shorten the body the skin of the earthworm has large number of tiny bristles which helps to get it hold on the ground by repeating repeated extension and contraction of body muscles it moves through the soil so earthworm does not have any internal skins the body is made up of rings joined end to end so the muscles attached to these rings helps to extend and contract the body it has got many tiny bristles that helps them to get hold on to the surface so by extension and contraction of body muscles it moves to the soil let us now discuss the movement in the snakes snakes as you know they do not have legs but uses their long backbone with the muscles for their movement their body moves into many loops to move in a forward direction by pressing against the ground snails snails move with the help of a flat muscular foot they glide along a solid surface lubricated with the mucus that is the foot has a layer of mucus it keeps secreting the mucus so that snails can move glide on to the solid surface the muscular contractions of foot helps in the movement let us see the discuss movement in birds we know that four limbs of the birds are modified into wings the bones are hollow which helps them to fly the bone of the hind limbs are used for perching and walking the shoulder bones and the breast bones are very strong and support muscles for flight which helps the wings to move up and down cockroaches we have seen that the cockroach will be having a three pairs of legs for walking two pairs of wings are attached to the breast for the flying okay so totally there are six legs in which three pairs of legs form meant for walking and two pairs are meant for flying the muscles attached to the legs helps in walking breast muscles attached to the wings helps in flying but they cannot fly much time for much time let us see how the movement takes place in fishes fishes have streamlined body which helps them to swim with least resistance the tail fin helps in changing the direction and also for small jerks through water so tail fin helps to change the directions and prevent them from small jerks through the water
let us have a chapter recap plants have two systems namely root system and the shoot system root helps the plants to anchor to the soil and grow towards the moisture and gravity but away from light stem bears leaves and flowers and hold the plant upright leaf is green with two main parts blade or lamina and the stalk or the petiole flowers are the structures that contain the reproductive organs of the flowering plants our skeleton is made up of 206 bones and many cartilages there are two parts of the skeletal system namely axial skeleton system and appendicular skeleton system there are movable and immovable joints in our body animals have locomotor organs for moving this ends chapter 10 vidya prakashan mandir